1977, a year to remember. Jimmy Carter was sworn in as America's 39th president. A great technological rivalry was born with the introduction of the Apple II personal computer and the Tandy TRS-80. In England, Queen Elizabeth II celebrated her silver jubilee. The King, Elvis Presley, left the room for the last time. But Tom Brady was born. And in Minneapolis, Minnesota, city of mystery, Indian activists founded an organization known today as MIGAZI Communications. In this rare video footage, reclusive co-founder Laura Waterman Whitstock recalls how a group worked to see what they could do to keep American Indian news produced by Indian people out there. Uh, a group of us were working together to see what we could do uh, to keep uh, uh, American Indian news uh, produced by Indian people uh, out there. The original membership of the organization is a total mystery. Roger Buffalo Head. Except for Roger Connor. Buffalo Head. Roger was uh, very uh, instrumental. Andy Marlowe uh, was hugely uh, instrumental. Among those people was Dave Larson, and Scott Raymond was one, and Janice Command, uh, Shelley McIntyre. Valerie uh, Larson, who was Valerie Sheehan then, uh, maybe one or two other people, but that was, was the nucleus of, of everyone. So it was a combination of people who had influence in the community and students. This once mysterious group became a presence in the dark corners of the city, meeting in undisclosed locations. We had been in the basement of Heart of the Earth, the basement of the Indian Center. We moved into 1519 uh, Franklin Avenue, which is uh, upstairs uh, across from the Indian Center. It was here that the group encountered Michael Dalby, a shadowy figure about whom little is known. Michael Dalby had been a grad student that worked with me on some research. Um, you know, had a physics background, but he had done a lot of actual building with his father. And he knew uh, something about the engineering and radio. And so he said he would build the studio. As he was doing that, one day he just, you know, um, opened up the, um, the frame of the, of the wall and looked down and there was this pile of teeth. Wait, <laughs> teeth? kind of unbelievable. It was gross. And it was a little gross. And apparently the dentist of who knows how long before, at least 50, 60 years before, had this gross habit of when he pulled teeth, he would stick them in this little hole in the wall and they would be in there. But the mainstream news media soon learned that Migazi Communications had a problem. The problem is simple, really, and yet it's elusive. The problem is money. Uh, radio equipment is very expensive. But Migazi Communications had a secret plan. In walked the consultant for the McKnight Foundation. An office, personnel, funds. The organization became, according to community leader Clyde Bellacourt, one of the most powerful institutions here in Minneapolis. Easy Communications has been one of our most powerful institutions here in Minneapolis. But how would Migazi Communications broadcast its message about the colorful vibrancy of indigenous identity? And it seemed to us that radio was a much, uh, a much cheaper medium uh, to go with. Radio? In a world where pictures are all important. No one today can say what Migazi Communications has really been up to. First person radio. What? The half hour program magazine, first person radio. Okay, few people today can say what Migazi Communications has really been One up time to. There, 
hooked up with radio stations across America and all the way up into Canada. And then achievement through communications after school program, a landmark in its field. But we did have a television program. It was called Madajmo. The National Native Information Center. A computer class. The after school program. Oh, no. Health and wellness, photography, newsletter, video production, radio production. Native Academy. Now, if Z ever establishes its own museum, then I've got a couple of donations for it, a couple of pieces of its history. One of our first promotional items there. I think a few of you might remember it. And an old t-shirt that was salvaged from my own personal archives. What is the truth about this organization and its impact on its community? We may never know. I was able to learn so much there. It was great. It was a great